So now let us call the Mr. Samin Lam Chung Loi. And as far as giving my uh, opinion regarding the topic, uh, I think I think most of the speakers have made valid points. So I don't really currently know what more to state. But uh, as far as bringing the students back to school is concerned, I think the new education policy, which focuses on learn, uh, teaching teaching children with the mother tongue, I think that that uh, I think that will really help in attracting the students back to school because I believe that uh, most young children will find it more exciting learning their subjects or whatever it is in their own mother tongue rather than English. And as Ms. Lumpkin Kim has stated, most of the children have difficulty in gra- uh, grasping English. So I think we, we can focus on that. And beyond that, speaking about online classes, even I myself, I have tried. I have tried these online classes, but the thing is that it's not really feasible for a community. It might be because of the parents or I don't know. But... While we were conducting that, some of the parents did not really ex- external, did not really communicate with us. So we had a big difficulty there when we tried running online classes from class 10 and 9. And then we, we had plans to go, be, to go beyond that. But then again, it really did not work out because most of the parents did not really understand the value of online classes. And I think that will be all from me. Oh, sure. So thank, thank you. you very much. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay. Now, uh, talking of online class, uh, I think uh, we need to invite uh, Sir S. T. Michaud uh, to give us, I mean, to, to educate us or to give us some insight on the online class, please, sir. It's high time we sat down and had a talk about it. We need to talk about the problem that we are in right now. And uh, hopefully, this will be the beginning of many more meetings to come. Now about online classes, my frank and open opinion of it, very briefly, let me just share. Firstly, is that uh, this was an extraordinary situation. And I'm speaking generally, not just for us in uh, Sada Hills or Kangkopi or Manipur, all of worldwide. It was a shock to everyone. And those who responded did as best as they could. And uh, give or take, let me not judge the merits or demerits. What it has done Uh, wherever it may be, it has prevented a total collapse of the system. So in a sense, it was like putting education per se on ventilator support. So that is what it is. Now coming to the Southern Hills context or the Hill uh, schools in general and the private schools in particular, frankly speaking, most of us are on missionary mode. That means we are doing it out of concern for education, you know, even at great uh, financial or other physical loss. So hats off to everyone uh, in the Hill schools and in uh, Kambup in particular. So my own assessment of online education is that, frankly, I am not a big fan. What the online system has done is it has only reflected or is just the digital version of the existing system. That means we are just uh, lecturing at students. We prepare a lecture, we uh, give an assignment and at the end of that we we test them on that so the flaw in the system which is already there that is reflected in the uh, digital version of it the rote learning so to cut a long story short the system that we follow in manipur reflects the indian system which in turn is a copy paste of the british system so lamtin kim please don't mind no offense to the british here Uh, But uh, what the late 18th century system of creating a class of uh, semi-literate clerical group of uh, employable people, that has not changed. Hopefully that will change and hopefully it will not be a case of too much in too less time. So that's what I uh, that's what I think of online learning. It's uh, I agree with the speakers who spoke earlier. It cannot be a substitute for normal classes. Actually, what the online system, frankly, it is, is just another form of distance learning. Distance learning is not something new. In India, we had the Indira Gandhi National Open University, IGNO. Even at this uh, secondary level, we have the NIOS. So that's about it. So uh, it cannot be a substitute. Coming to the situation in Kangopi regarding 
online classes or let's say the digital platform it's not doing very well frankly speaking and the places which have managed to do something it comes back again to the whole divide that means areas along the highway who have better access to uh, say high speed internet they are doing much better versus the interior areas so the digital divide in a sense it reflects the existing uh, divide that is already there in terms of uh, uh, economics in terms of the infrastructure now that's that's a political uh, question for politicians to answer but in in all of this the greatest sufferers i may like to point out are the government school students so i hope i have analyzed it objectively now what has happened really is that as lamtim kim pointed out most of the present group of educators or teachers that we have are uh, frankly with a very basic training now with this sudden shift to online learning with the limited resources the result was that the end user or the or the student got a very poor experience now let's compare it to the western model f- for a second and once again we have blindly copied uh, wh- what is happening in the west or what is the west doing they are doing online classes let's also do it so the western model is that you have a child sitting in a very quiet environment probably with a headset and a, and at least a, a laptop screen of uh, let's say a decent enough size whereas what has happened here we have even as uh, dr roel pointed out we have uh, students climbing hills searching for networks even making improvised tents in in the middle of the forest to to access that that digital learning so for and all this uh, the environment and at least the basic um, the devices that was not available if you like to call it uh, the criticisms of it what has really happened actually happened uh, matter of fact in kapopi as would be probably the case in uh, all other hill hill districts now let's say look at the pros for a while now some educators and academics believe that it will replace education in the long run and it could even be commercialized yes in a sense i i strongly believe in the youtube uh, system there a student who is motivated on his or her own they have the flexibility to learn at their own speed that means a video is there they can pause it they can rewind it they can even forward it they can skip it but once again this um, just analyzing among uh, a few students this is uh, varied across age groups and genders generally we find boys responding better and girls responding a little less probably because at home frankly speaking they might have got extra work at home so uh, you know is to to look after younger siblings or to cook or to do whatever so in any case uh, the benefits are there and as uh, i think uh, semilam pointed out unfortunately the we are also handicapped by let us say a semi literate or an or an under appreciative uh, public so once that sets in i think uh, just like every other uh, part of the globe which has taken advantage of online learning this could also be possible in kambopi and sadels in particular in the long run what do i think is it sustainable it's frankly it's not financially also is not sustainable and and academically as i pointed out online learning cannot replace um, the normal physical classes i think the priority and i hope this will be the first of many discussions is that if we are in the profession or in the calling of uh, knowledge and society building it's our uh, duty a priority that all sections of society are is number 1 and that this becomes a relationship a very healthy relationship when we compare societies that are doing well or are healthy there exists a healthy relationship between the educators that is the schools and the authorities or the teachers or the lecturers and the students and there's also active support at home so somewhere along the line something has gone long gone wrong and i'm not here to point fingers but it's high time we sit down and talk about it and the next uh, bigger question is we need to open schools and when do we actually do that and the, what is actually worrying about that will st- students even return to school we are seeing a lot of cases of students dropping out but i think this is not the time to feel sorry for ourselves yes we have been victims of the pandemic but we can also be the solution so this is where i think we need to put our heads together and uh, look of a system where we'll also look at the local requirements of our area of our district so that they are able to be employed in future
and uh, i think that tag which we inherited unfortunately from colonialism or the colonial system is that if you don't go to school or college you are resigned to working in the farm like the rest of the illiterate people the most important thing is that education has to be valued and respected as with any other essential service thank you, okay. thank you so much yeah, you have really pointed out sir yes uh, this digital thing has uh, created a uh, uh, huge divide among the rich and the poor and uh, among the haves and the not have let me come back to uh, dr p hung singh sir yeah can you please uh, supplement us with some more ideas okay i would like to yeah thank you very much i would like to come in again because uh, most, most of the i may uh, not be able to do in uh, i mean other session because uh, like i said that a uh, live has become digital i mean day or night we have been like this the way i'm sitting in front of my laptop now this is what life is about so it seems that you know my suggestion does not go well with the <laughs> the, the uh, proprietors of the school which is which i understand because uh, <clears throat> there are many problems and there is i mean there is uh, online classes uh, as you all have uh, pointed out are not the perfect means of education and i will never say that uh, this is uh, not uh, the perfect way or a replacement of the conventional form of education i will be the last person to support that view now <clears throat> what i would like to i um, mean what i'm trying to emphasize here is that when we have no other option i mean when there are no other options available uh this is the only means through which we can keep our students and denis has pointed out one important uh, factor that are the students going to return to school after this time that also is something of great concern uh, because unless we keep them engaged and make them feel that they are school going children you know they are uh, i mean uh, they are attending school you know that that mentality continuity of that mentality is very important. because for a couple of years now uh, they have been disconnected with the school they have even forgotten that they are students of the team so it is important i mean from the business perspective as well as from the educational perspective also to keep them engaged now what i'm uh, what i would like to emphasize here is that i mean if you if you try if you try it out that the school that engages the students in whatever way they can engage them is going to be the school who who is able to retain their students after this pandemic you know coming uh, another point that we should address here is that whether the school opens or not is not up to us it's not up to the it's up to the i mean administration who decides what is going to open and what is not going to open it is up to them so since this is also whether the school opens or not is not up to us so we have to make do what are we supposed to do in this kind of uh, that was what my situation where i mean online classes come into picture now <clears throat> as far as connectivity is concerned digital divide is concerned this is a worldwide problem it is not i mean uh, digital divide has come in uh, right after the pandemic no it is not like that i mean i am uh, i mean i mean my subject is in that area we are we have been dealing with digital divide i mean uh, from the time i'm taking up this profession i mean this is a global phenomenon which is true in our area as well so even i mean let me share another experience again besides our online classes we have i said we have live classes live classes are uh, uploaded in youtube uh, for them to see whenever they i mean they uh, is convenient to them and one more thing that we do is that we give them uh, reading material of course textbooks are available but sometimes you know uh, textbook needs to be digested so students just reading the textbook may not be helpful so we try to make a digest of uh, those kind of prescribed textbook of course in universities it's not just one book so it's multiple books so we try to prepare materials and then uh, in in google classroom only we upload the videos the the reading materials even some additional materials if students are serious enough to read. so with this kind of a multiple medium somebody is not able to attend live classes they can go to the video lecture the link we provide we provide in the i mean in the in the in the uh, google classroom platform only and then uh, uh, and, and some of them who are not able to even look at this uh, i mean uh, book, i mean youtube class recorded class classes they can still look at the 
materials, reading materials that we uh, prepare for them. So at least, I mean, these three medium, in one way or the other, we are able to reach the students who are at the, I mean, remotest corner of the country as well. So that is why I'm suggesting that, I mean, it is not something that we, tomorrow we go and demand that, you know, school has to be open, that we cannot do it and nobody will listen to ourselves. So in this situation, we have to make do, we have to improvise under the circumstance. So we have to improvise and then try to at least maintain that continuity. Now coming to the quality of education. Uh, fortunate, I mean, unfortunately, uh, how education is, uh, you know, imparted to the student. We don't have, uh, I mean, much choice. It has been handed down, syllabus has been handed down by the government to us. New education policy comes. I really don't understand new education policy. My university has been asking us to to comment on new education policy. I said, my, I said, my only comment on new education policy is no comment. Why? Because that, you know, uh, the, the, the people who frame the education policy themselves seem to be very confused of what they really try to achieve out of. So this is the kind of predicament under which we are subjected to. That is why, I mean, the government shove it down to us and then like it or not, we have to accept. Then uh, uh, Ms. Lamtin Kim uh, suggested something about, you know, skill-based uh, education, which is very important. I have given, uh, I have suggested this in some of my uh, speeches also, that, you know, corruption is rampant, that we, I mean, uh, that is uh, quite visible. In, in, in Manipur, everything is possible and nothing is possible. So corruption is rampant. Development scheme that comes to us or skill-based development scheme that comes to us never reaches that. So, I mean, in that kind of situation, people resorted to, since there is no livelihood, people resorted to uh, things like, you know, cultivation of opium. So what I've suggested that in order to tackle the opium cultivation effectively, uh, it is important that our people are trained or are, or are equipped to make a living. I mean, give them some skill. It may be masonry, it may be carpentry, or it may be anything, but from where they can make a livelihood. And that basis, you know, uh, if we can do that, that is, uh, I mean, uh, something very noble. Uh, but uh, that will take, uh, you know, a lot of uh, deliberation before uh, schools and schools can actually jump onto that kind of thing. Uh, it requires a change, I mean, a change in the policy and change in the way we look at the education. So I think it's a good suggestion. Maybe we will keep these things in mind in the future whether it will be possible for schools to incorporate these things. Now, without putting any age, age bar, a person of 50 years is willing to learn something, can come to the school. I mean, this kind of thing, I think some schools have already um, uh, done also. So these things we can uh, think of. But as far as this current situation is concerned, what concerns me most is that, I mean, the school is not doing anything. That is very alarming. I mean, we are supposed to educate the uh, children. That is, I mean, uh, I mean, giving them certificate, as I said, is no big deal. You know, anybody can be given a certificate. But engaging them, I mean, in some form of the other, let us not try to, you know, uh, try to hide or try to, you know, uh, defend ourselves behind the, the problem, okay? Because problem should be there. Whether it is uh, a pandemic times or whether it is normal times, we have been facing problems and schools that have seen, especially private schools, have, have been very resilient on facing the problem. I've seen that, you know, un, un, you know, uh, uh, substantial amount of money you have to donate to left and right. And then, you know, all kinds of those problems you have come across. So this uh, pandemic situation, you have already come over more difficult problems than these uh, uh, compared to the problems that you have uh, overcome. This, uh, you know, keeping the students engaged somehow digitally in a digital environment is something very small. It is, you know, you are dealing with the students themselves. Of course, you are dealing with the society itself. Now, what I am, uh, uh, on my own capacity, what I'm trying to do is that church is very important in our uh, society. I mean, what comes from the church, and we all follow it. And then uh, uh, I'm not saying that that is good or bad. But now what I'm trying to suggest to most of the churches is that if possible, please do online uh, services. So, I mean, for a church to have a, uh, a Zoom license, uh, to buy a Zoom license is nothing. 
I mean, uh, a few uh, thousand rupees only. I mean, they can purchase. So if churches are able to start these uh, online uh, church services, I'm sure within a few months' time, everyone will be, I mean, born again to adopt this digital. So as, uh, I mean, a uh, fellow, what do you call that, uh, you know, uh, inhabitant of uh, Southern Hills, I would appeal to everyone, please encourage your respective church to go online because churches everywhere are going online already. Now people will learn, uh, will learn that yes, these things are possible. Services can be held, church services can be held online. Then with that, that will bring in a lot of, uh, I mean, changes in the mindset of the parents. So if after that, if we push this uh, digital education in the form of live classes, recorded classes, in the form of uh, reading materials, I'm sure we'll be able to engage as students. And then uh, uh, I, I would like to place it as a challenge that uh, and then see that the school that comes up with this means take it seriously. Uh, in spite of all the difficulties, I'm sure that is going to be the school that everyone sought after when normal is returned. Again, I'm saying that this is not a replacement of our conventional system. This is a temporary arrangement, an improvisation, a response to the situation in which we are. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Oh, yeah. Let me come back to uh, Miss Lum thinking once again, and then we will uh, end up our session very shortly. So, Miss Lum thinking, any more session, please? Oh, thank you, sir. Um, I think I just really appreciate everything everyone has said um so dennis dr hang Seng is so um uh, uh so Simon Lam, um it's i think you know we realize that there are it, it's so good to just have this opportunity just to come together and um and i think we're stronger when we when we do this when we have these kind of meetings it's, uh, it's so powerful and i'm sorry you know i haven't obviously made any of the face-to-face -face meetings that you've had um but um i think yeah first of all this is a very important first step um and secondly i think yeah we we all agree on the main points and uh, so how do we move forward? And I think what IPS officer was saying, like at the right at the beginning, those the quality of education, it comes back to quality of education and, um, uh, you know, from my side, the breadth of education as well. Um, and I think how do we how do we therefore um, provide our teachers with good training? Um, I think that's really key. Um, and I agree about what Dr. Hang Singh was saying about the, um, the, the Indian education policy. It's it's quite confusing. Like it does feel like it's they've just kind of stolen it from somewhere else and try to without actually thinking about the context which we're trying to apply it to because there's such a massive um, gap to bridge. It's like how do we get there? We need we need to and not everything is helpful in there as well um, but there are a few helpful things and I and I do think we need to think about uh, uh, critical thinking for our learners um, and get how do we engage them and um, yeah and more practical ways of teaching um, and the other thing I would say about the church online I think that's a really good idea but also um, yeah so I we have because Mahatma Gandhi said that really, he, he said like education is not just about knowledge, right? It should be, it should be much more holistic than that. And um, I've been trying to do, I've honestly, it's been very unsuccessful in terms of numbers. I've been trying to do Zoom assemblies on a Sunday where we, we have our school values, you know, so we've covered perseverance. What does perseverance look like? And we link it to Bible verses. And then also uh, we've done forgiveness um, and, and we're just, uh, we just we were talking about the story of the prodigal son last week. And, you know, so we've got our school values and, and it's trying to really get those into the character because that at the end of the day, we are in a very, very important and significant position to deal with corruption in, in our state. And 
uh, dealing with corruption, I think, only comes through modeling, first of all, modeling um, good character, but also what does it mean to be forgiving? What does it mean to be respectful? What does it mean to be honest? What does it mean to be um, united and so on? So I, I do think character development is has to go alongside education. So, yeah, I'll, I'll stop talking. Thank you so much, sir. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, uh, we have all rightly said and pointed out uh, very important points. And now uh, let us not uh, stretch further. I would like to ask Sir Dennis to propose a word of thanks and that will be the end of our session. Thank you all. And uh, especially Sir JP. I think uh, we need to engage each other more at the level of educators, school heads, people in the academic uh, faculties and also among students and parents as well. This is how hopefully we will be able to take this engagement forward. I think we need to remind ourselves that after all, we are part of the same team and we need to sit down, talk about it and work out solutions. So thank you all. And it's been a great pleasure and looking forward to uh, the next meeting with you all. Mm -hmm.